Master Affinity Photo 2, the powerful and affordable photo editing software with this comprehensive tutorial. Whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned photographer, you'll learn everything you need to know to create stunning photos. This tutorial covers everything from the basics of opening and saving images to more advanced topics such as non-destructive editing, raw image processing, composting, HDR photography and colour grading. With its easy to follow instructions and clear screenshots, this tutorial will help you master Affinity Photo 2 in no time. Enroll today and start creating stunning photos with Affinity Photo 2. This tutorial is perfect for photographers of all skill levels who want to learn how to use Affinity Photo 2. Anyone who wants to learn how to edit their photos like a pro, creative professionals who need to use Affinity Photo 2 in their work. Don't wait any longer, enrol today and start mastering Affinity Photo 2. Introduction. So, welcome to the most comprehensive tutorial on Affinity Photo 2. Whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned photographer, this course will teach you everything you need to know to master this powerful photo editing software. Affinity Photo 2 is a powerful and versatile photo editor that offers a wide range of features for both beginners and professionals. With its easy to use interface and comprehensive set of tools, Affinity Photo 2 makes it easy to create stunning photos, no matter what your skill level. In this course, you'll learn everything you need to know to use Affinity Photo 2, including how to open and save images, how to adjust colours and brightness, how to remove unwanted objects, how to crop and resize images, how to add text and effects, how to create layers and masks, and how to export your images. We'll also cover more advanced topics, such as non-destructive editing, raw image processing, composting, HDR photography, colour grading, by the end of this course, you will be able to use Affinity Photo 2 to create stunning photos that will impress your friends, family and clients. So what are you waiting for? Enroll in this course today and start mastering Affinity Photo 2. Here are some of the benefits of taking this course. Learn everything you need to know to use Affinity Photo 2, from the basics to advanced techniques. Discover how to use Affinity Photo 2 to create stunning photos for any purpose. Learn how to edit your photos like a professional photographer. Master the art of photo editing with Affinity Photo 2. Enroll today and start mastering Affinity Photo 2. Now, in this first lesson, quite simply, we're going to have a look at opening and saving images in, a in Affinity Photo version 2. Now, to open an image, obviously launch Affinity Photo 2 and go to File, Open. Now, I've got on the screen here, let me cancel that on the screen. I had some files open. Go to File, Open. And we can see there's a whole lot of files there already saved. And you can see where they are. I've got them in Affinity Photo. Now, what you might have is photos in Apple Photos that you've loaded up from your camera and other sources. So let's just scroll down there. I've got some manga photos here. These are images that I've saved to Affinity Photo. Uh, to, to the Apple Photos. 
But more interestingly, let's have a look at some other files I've got. Now there's a zebra or zebra. Now I've highlighted that and you can see the little circle there because it's in Apple Photos, it's taking a little while to load. So we'll just load that around there and now I can open it. And you'll see it's opened in there. Now you can see in the toolbar I've got develop, cancel. It's a raw image. That means it's undeveloped. It's like, think of it as a negative in the old film days. Now I don't want to mess about with this. What I want to do is just raise the exposure or drop the exposure a little bit. That'll darken his stripes a little bit. Raise the black point a little bit. You can see I'm making these adjustments. Drop the brightness just a tad. Enhance the contrast. Let's get those stripes a little sharper. A bit more clarity. Turn the saturation down a little bit. Just drop those greens a little bit. Bring up the vibrance a little bit. Now you've got white balance, shadows and highlights. That's a quick look at developing a raw photo. If you take raw photos with your camera. Okay, cancel, output, show all layers. Let's go to develop. Now that is a photo. It's now you could save that as a JPEG or a PNG, but let's just go to File. I want to save that to work on it later. Save as. Now I don't want to save it back to Photos. I'm keeping all my work in Dropbox, Affinity Photo, and I'll just drop it into Affinity Photo. You can see there's lots of them there, and I'll leave it with that number there, which is the number of the photo that's in Apple Photos. But this is not saving it as a PNG, this is just saving it as an Affinity Photo work file. Now I'll find, save it as Zebra in Affinity Photo. Save. There we go. Now if I want that to be saved as a PNG file, you go to Export. Go back up to File. Down to Export. Now I'll simply export that as a PNG. And it's there's a preview of it. I'll export that. Now I'll save that not to Affinity Photo, but to Pictures. Now it's the same file name still. But I've got a directory on here called Pictures, and there it is there. It shows up in there. Now I'll just save it to Pictures, not to any particular directory. Although if you've got a photo shoot, that's where it will be. Now let's have a look here. We'll open a new Finder window. I'll go to Pictures. And there's Zebra there. That's the file saved. Now if I go to Dropbox, find Dropbox, Affinity Photo, now I want that number P110. So this is going to be a little more difficult to find. It's alphabetical at the moment, which is good. LMNOP11. There we go. P110, the zebra. And it's an affinity photo file. And there it is there. Now that's really straightforward. That's opening and saving a file. Let's leave that one there because you can. Let's go to there. No, we don't want photo, we want file. Now we want file. We want to 
open a recent image. Now here's a recent image and it's an Affinity Photo one. It's one I've just used before. Let's have a look at that. And that opens it in another tab. See the tab there? And there's the zebra we're working on and there's the image. If I wanted to save that image again, I'd just go up here. Now it doesn't, there's been no work on it, so it, you, save doesn't work. If I did some work in there and changed that somehow, I would save or save as. Now, save as. We're still in Affinity Photo, but no, I don't want to do that. Let's just go to Pictures. And I'll save it there and save it there. Now that's saved as an Affinity Photo file, not not as a um, it's Pyramid Temp as an Affinity Photo file. If I want to save that back to my um, Apple Photos directory, go to Share and add to photos and that just simply puts it back into as you just saw it bobbing up and down then Apple Photos let's have a look in Apple Photos and there it is down there that's too easy that's all we need to do at the moment on how to open and save images I'd strongly recommend that you experiment with this and find the different ways that you can open and save your images. Remember saving an image simply saves it as an Affinity Photo file which is not usable by anything else other than Affinity Photo Designer and Publisher. If you wanted it as a PNG or JPEG or anything like that you've got to go to File and Export and you can export it as any of those there too many to choose from. Keep everybody happy. Okay, let's move on to the next lesson, shall we? Affinity Photo version 2 has a user-friendly interface that is easy to learn and navigate. The interface is divided into several main areas. There's the toolbar, and the toolbar is located at the top of the window and contains all of the most common tools for editing. Now that's up there, and we can't see anything in highlight at the moment because I don't have an image loaded. So let's go and load an image so this will all become a lot more clearer. Now there's a nice image there, Australian Outback Town. Let's just drag that across, an easy way of opening a file, and there it is there. Now we can see the top toolbar. Along the top there contains lots of the editing tools that you'll need, and if you hover on them, you'll see that what they are comes up in a little drop-down menu. There's the photo persona. There's a few other things there. We won't worry too much about those at the moment. But they're there. The panels. The panels are located on the right hand side. Now there's a number of panels there. Histogram, colors, swatches, and so forth. There's more panels, layers, channels, stock, brushes, all very useful things. The document window. The document window is located in the center of the window and displays the image you're currently editing. And you can see it's that one there. Navigator is located at the bottom of the window and provides a thumbnail view of your image. There's the navigator there. Now, Here's a more detailed overview of each area of the Affinity Photo version 2 user interface. 
The toolbar contains all of the most common tools for editing images, such as the brush tool, the eraser tool, the selection tool, the text tool. You can also use the toolbar to access features such as the zoom, the undo tool, and the navigation tool. Now if I just move that up there a little bit, you can see that up here we've got a whole range of options that are available. So don't forget they're there. It's not just on the screen, it's in the toolbar above the screen. And as we go along, we'll work on a few of those. The panels contain layers, history, brushes and effects. Panels over here. The document window, located in the centre. The navigator is located at the bottom of the window. And you can use the navigator to quickly scroll to different areas of the image. And you can see that if I I'm down there, if I click on that area of the image, top right hand corner, or right in the centre, that puts it right in the centre. So the navigator allows you to move quickly around the image without having to drag and drop and generally misplace things by using this. Because if you haven't got the view tool selected, you see you can use the hand to move that whole image around. The view tool, this one here, the move tool, below the view tool, move tool, that one there allows you to move parts of the image. Now if you've got that selected accidentally and you've got a number of layers, you could accidentally move something that you don't want to. And you might only be trying to get to there to work on that bird, for example. So let's put that back in the middle. What's the next one down? The colour picker. Now you can see across here on the right hand side in the colour panel that white is the predominant colour. But if I select the colour picker tool, You can select the colour picker tool. I can change that by going over here, selecting the red. That's the colour picker tool, the red of the reef. You can see it just there. And it's changed what was white back to red. Now I want that white in case I accidentally touch something. So I'll just go back to that little panel there and there's a white swatch and I'll just change it to white. There's the crop tool, which does exactly what it says. You can crop a piece of the image. I just want those people there. Now that they're cropped, you can see up the top panel again, we've got all the options there, but if I just apply that, that crops those people out, you can see. Now, I'll use that and you can see selected out there. So that tells me that the full image, which you can see there, is still behind the cropped part. But what I want is just the cropped image. Now we'll have a look at cropping out just part of this image and saving it to another image or to a new layer in our image here. You'll notice that this image is locked because I don't want to change it. So we'll go across the other side to our toolbar and you'll see the rectangular mark tool. Now you can you have all sorts of shapes there, elliptical, columns, rows and a freehand, but I want the rectangular mark tool and we'll go down here and you can see the little crosshair in the middle of that red circle there. I'll just pull out a dotted line. You can see the crawling ants going around there. I'll just let that go. Now up to the top here, you can see we've got some options have popped up in the toolbar at the top. I want to refine that. 
just to make sure that that's the selected edge that we want. A border width of 10, no, just matte edges. Let's just leave that as it is. But what we've got down here, the output, we can either output it to a mask, a new layer, or a new layer with mask. Now what I want is just that selection, so I'll go for a new layer. Now when I apply, you can see that it puts that in a new layer there, turns off the underneath layer and puts that in a new layer there. If I wanted to, what I can do with this, which is really useful, is go up to Edit and Copy. Now go to File and New from Clipboard. Now there's just the two men from the image, from the original image. That's very useful, that tool. And it's on a separate layer, and there's a different image altogether, of course. Let's turn that layer back on, and there they are. I can turn that off, and we're just back on our original background layer. Now, there's lots of useful um, additions to this. There's a flood select tool, there's a selection brush tool, flood fill tool, gradient tool, you can put a gradient across an image, paint brush tool, paint mixer brush, erase brush, dodge, all sorts of very useful tools down that side. The, the, and these ones here that have a little triangle next to them, if you click on that triangle, it shows you all the options that you can put in there. Just because we can, let's put a triangle in there. First we'll go up and make sure that it's a red triangle, and we'll just put it there. Just drag out a red triangle. Puts it in there, you see, there's the new layer. Of course, we don't want a new triangle, so we just go down there and delete it. Now, one of the really powerful options in this is the Stock Studio. Let's have a look here and go and search for a desert. Lots of deserts there. There's the pyramid image I used before. And there's some flowers. Let's just drag the flowers over there and we'll drop it in the middle. And there it is there. There's, because it comes from Pixabay, it gives the credits there and you can just exit that. Now there's a new picture. Let's go back to our layers and see where that ended up. There it is on top of everything else. Even though they're turned on, that layer overwrites them. So that's a bit of a walk around the user interface. I would recommend highly that you put some images on there, and even images that you don't mind losing, because you can accidentally destroy the images. Now you can see I've got snapping on, so it's showing the red and green exact centre position of that image. And that's right there. OK, let's move on to the next lesson, shall we? Now, in this lesson, we're looking at being able to resize and crop images. So, resizing and cropping are two slightly different things, of course. Let's look at the first one, shall we? We've got our image here selected. That's that one there. And you can see that quite clearly. Nice African sunset. Rather stylized. Now, we go up to Document. Click on Document and go down to Resize Document. Now at the moment we've got 6x4 in there, but what I want to do is undo the chain there and make it 4 inches 
by 4 inches. 300 dpi, I can set the units but I'll leave it at inches. And then click on resize. Now you can see that pulls that into a 4x4 four four image, 4 inches by 4 inches. Obviously that's much bigger on the screen than in real life. But that's alright, that's exactly what we want. When it's actually printed out, it will be 4 inches by 4 inches. Now that's fairly straightforward. Document. Resize document. Let's make that 6 by 4. Now it's already set in inches, so we don't need to type in the inches. That'll do it itself. And resize the document again. That's really easy. That's all there is to that, really. Um, there are lots more advanced options that you can get to resize, uh, but we'll leave it at that for the moment. Now the next thing that we want to look at is the crop tool. The crop tool is a little different. You can see in document there, we don't want to resize the canvas and we don't want to alter the margins or the pixel art document. This is all we're dealing with at the moment. So let's go to the crop tool, which is the fourth option down. Click on the crop tool and you can see it places the cropping handles in a, in a one-thirds pattern all around it. The overlay grid is a thirds grid. We can have the golden spiral, so you can crop the image and stay within the golden spiral. We can use diagonals, so you can crop an image within the diagonals for keeping a design where it should be. And the um, pie grid is that one there, which is very similar to the thirds grid. What we're looking at here is the one thirds grid, and you can see those two handles there are apart. Now we'll use the one-thirds grid because I'll take hold of that handle and we want to just get the giraffe and the tree. There's a little bit of the ground there. We don't need all of the groundwork in that large black band at the bottom. Bring in the sunshine. We're right to the edge. Now we've got the top edge of the sun just there, just there. The left side of the giraffe and just under the feet so we can see that it's it's on a, a nice little area there. Now let's have a look at the transform option. Can we see in there what the size of this, the width and the height is? Let's just move that out. We don't need to worry about transform down there. What we've got up here is the mode is unconstrained. Now you could have an original ratio or a custom ratio and you can resample it, but it's 195 by 784. What's the original ratio give us? There we go. That's maintaining the one thirds bars in its original ratio. So it's slightly smaller. If we hold the shift key down and move that up so that we've just got the groundwork in, you'll see that it maintains the distance between all of the areas, one third, middle third, lower third. Now custom ratio and resample. Let's see what resample gives us. Nothing, it's exactly the same. So that's okay. Six inches by four inches. And that's just what that is. That'll make a six inch by four inch. Now we go here, we're happy with that. Let's apply that. 
and there's our new image. You can see there background, you can see there in our navigator, we've got just that much and there's not so much ground there. But here's a trick, something you need to know. If I select the image again, it doesn't change it, you see. And we've got the constraints right there. So if you look over here, you can see that the background image is considerably bigger there, but in our navigator, You can see the edge, there's the original image behind it there. See that? So it's non-destructive. You got you have to keep in mind that the cropping tool is non-destructive. Let's get back to the center of that image. Which means you haven't lost all the image around it, it's just not there at the moment. What does that mean? That means you can work with just this bit of the image without having all the rest of the image in behind it. Let's save that file. Save as and the image numbers there. Six by four. Let's go back a little bit, put a space in there, and we'll save that into pictures again where it was. Now that will be saved as an affinity photo file. So resizing and cropping. Document, resize document. 6x4 and we've cropped it to 6x4 but you could make that 4x4. Four four. You can make that any size you want in fact. Just cancel that. Now before we move on to the next lesson I just wanted to show you with the cropping tool how you save what you crop. I kind of skipped over that when we were looking at it before so here it is again. Let's just bring that crop in, bring, the, bring it up to just below the tree, so there's only a little bit of the groundwork there. We'll bring that in there. This is unconstrained cropping, I'm not worried about the two thirds there, see that's unconstrained. If, if you wanted to use the original ratio again, there it is there. Now I just bring out that corner and you can see it's enlarging the whole thing so the edge of the sun is in just there and the bit of the ground is just in there. Now we want, they've, we've got that where we want it. We just apply that and you can see it's applied to that. Now all I want is that image there. No other images around it, nothing. So let's select that and you can see the images around it and it's in fact it's locked over there locked and, uh, and unlocked now doesn't matter that changes to dots if I lock that again there we go I was pressing the wrong thing now it's locked and you can see it changes it to little crosses I diverge now what we've got to do is Go to File and Export. Now I want to export it as a PNG, PNG file. That'll do for now. Whole document, nothing really fancy there. Export. Now I'll give it the same name as one I just exported. Simple Crop PNG. And this will overwrite that one. Replace it. Yes, we want it replaced. Now let's go and see what we can do with that. File, 
open recent because I had I had simple crop PNG open just before. Let's just open it again and there it is there. Perfect. Transform. There's its size and because I've got that setting in, when I bring in a new image, it sets it and you can see that's its size right there, down in transform, right there, down the bottom right hand corner. Now before we move on from this lesson, let's go over cropping again because it's a very useful tool and you'll find you use it a lot. So let's go down to the cropping tool and click on the crop tool and you can see the boundaries. We know what that is now. Now it's unconstrained, so I'm just moving that down there. I'll move that up there. So it's just below the feet. Move that into the edge of the chair on that side and the edge of the chair on that side. So we've still got a three-thirds uh, boundaries around there and it looks fairly well balanced and that's exactly what we want. Now let's apply that so that we can only see that. Now there's two forms of cutting that out so we can use it. And the first one is we go to that image which is right there, which is that one there. Now we go to rasterize and trim. You can see I, I right, let me start that again. Right click on that layer, go down to rasterize and trim, and it rasterizes just the part we can see. Now we can copy that, edit, copy, and we can create a new file from that. New from clipboard, and there's the neat image. That's all there is to that image. Now we'll go back to that, and I'll go Control Z and undo all that. Let's enable that one there. I'll actually get rid of that one there completely, so there's no mistake. There we go. Control Z, we've got our full picture back. Now let's do the crop again. Put the crop tool in. This time we'll go down to just above their hats, just below their feet. Let's crop this one right into near the shoes and this one right into next to the next to the image of the person on the right. We'll go to apply. Now we go up to layer and right down the bottom merge visible. And you can see that's created a new layer just there, and that's that layer there, which we can now copy, edit, copy, and we can make a new image from the clipboard. So there's another way of doing that. There's that one there. There's the one we did just before with crop, rasterize, and trim. And there's the original sitting there, and that's converted. Now, it hasn't destroyed the original image. It's just created a different layer. Now, that's all there is to it. Let's now move on to the next lesson. For this exercise, we're looking at the adjustment layers. Now adjustment layers are very powerful tools. Adjustment layers allow you to non-destructively change the colors of your photographs. To apply an adjustment layer we need to press on the little icon in the adjustment panel. It's shown down below here. It looks like a black and white circle. There we go, just there. And you can see the little word adjustment pops up in the bottom right hand side there. Now if we click on that, we're presented with a whole set of adjustments. And we're going to select from that. 
After you check this icon, you have many options for different adjustments that you can apply to your picture. As an example, let's try applying a black and white adjustment. And as you can see, it automatically turns our picture to black and white. There's our black and white adjustment just there. We click on that. And immediately you can see that the entire image is now black and white. And you might think that's the end of it. But it's important to note that every adjustment layer works differently. But in this case we can use these sliders to determine how bright or dark certain colours become. In our black and white picture for example, if we bring the red slider to the left, all of the reds in our photograph will become darker. But if we bring it to the right, then they will become lighter. I thought it looked better darker, so I'm going to bring this slider all the way to the left. So you modify the red, the reds, and they go to the left. And you can see that the reds, the blacks, become darker. If I go all the way to the right, they become slightly lighter. So we'll move it to the left a little bit, I think. Probably about 20%. And you can do the same with the other colours. You can continue this process for the rest of the colours and when you're done adjusting your black and white photo, you can exit out of this dialogue by pressing the little red button. But let's have a look there. You can see that how they're changing. There is obviously, this is a sandy beach colour, so there's the colours there are going darker. Move the green. How are the greens going? There's very little effect from the green, so we can probably leave the green. Very little effect from that one. Are the blues in the image? No blues in the image because it's not affecting their colours. Magenta? None there. So our most effective colour changer in that image is the red The yellow, the yellow is, has quite an effect. So we can darken the, the darks by moving the red down and lighten the rest up. Now if that's all we want from that, we just click on that. And there it is. You can see the black and white dialog box. And we can, using that, we can see a before and after by turning it on and off. There's on. And you can see the yellows there that have come up, and there they are there. So we've made the yellows lighter, and the reds darker. If you ever want to change your black and white adjustments, all you need to do is double click on the icon on the left of your adjustment layer in the layers panel, and the dialog box will reappear. Which is that one there. Double click on that and there's the adjustment layer again. Now the adjustment layer affects only the layers beneath it. So in this case because our picture is beneath the adjustment layer it's being affected. But if we were to move our photo on top of the adjustment layer then the adjustment layer would no longer affect it. This is important to remember for when you've got more than one layer. If you move that layer up there, of course the layer's on top now, and the adjustment layer has no effect on it. If we move it back down underneath again, you can see that it does. Now there's something to be careful of on. I just noticed that. If we take that layer and move it up there you can see the blue bar behind it goes right across if we move it down there so it's only within that layer it doesn't work we've got to take that right up to the top we've got to take that all the way so the blue highlight bar is all the way across otherwise it nests within that adjustment layer and effectively becomes blank. 
If you ever want to delete the layer, all you need to do is drag it down to the trash can or right click the layer and select delete from the drop down menu. So you may want to actually delete that. Make sure you've got the correct layer and you can drag it down there to the trash can or right click on it and click on delete. And there's your original image back in place. Now another example of how adjustment layers work, and I can show you this by enhancing the colors of the next picture, old schoolhouse, that's the one I want. You'll notice that the, the colors, it's, it's quite an overcast day in fact, and the colors are a bit mm, washed out you might say, a bit monochrome the colors. So we're going to click on the adjustment icon and select brightness and contrast. With this adjustment layer, I'm going to increase the brightness and increase the contrast. Then I'll exit out of this dialog box to see a before and after. Now, I've got two layers here still because we were working on that before, remember? And you can see just in there where I've left just enough Red, if you look carefully at that, you can see there's just enough in there to see where the firebox was. So let's remove that. There's, you can see where the, um, the life, it's, it's on a beach. It's a, not a fire hydrant. It's actually um, a life buoy. Anyway, we'll leave that in there because we want that layer beneath it. And in this case, we go down to our adjustment layer and we select the brightness and contrast and that's that one there the brightness we can increase and you can see the the increase in the brightness the contrast you can see the increase in the contrast that's made it into quite a bright day in fact now I'll exit out of this dialog box and we can see A before and an after. You can see I'm turning off and on the little tick. Is visible? Is visible. There we go. It looks a little bit like the adjustment layer is a little bit too strong. Double click on that. Brings up the dialog box. Let's bring the brightness down a little bit. That's a little bit better. And the contrast, I'd suggest in this case we want about 25% for that too. So they're not increased dramatically because that's still obviously an overcast sky, but we've brought the light up a little bit. Let's have a look at the before and after, before and after. So it's just put a little bit more light on the image, which is just what we want. Now lastly, if we want a final example of how adjustment layers work, let's come back to the adjustment layer and select HSL. And with HSL we can increase the, the color saturation of our picture. In this case all we need to do is click on the adjustment layer, select HSL, and you can see we've got there. We've got a hue shift, a saturation shift, and a luminosity shift. Which ones do we want to increase? There are many, other, many adjustments we could use to continue to enhance our photo, but in this case, we'll just bring the saturation up a little bit. Now you can see it's the, brown, the oranges are more orange, the greens are more green. As a, as a, and you can see what's happened there, of course. It's just incredibly saturated. But the saturation shift just brings a bit of yellow back into the beach, a bit of yellow back into the brickworks. We don't need to move the hue, I don't think. The hue and the luminosity. See the luminosity changes? It's almost 
and I think I'll leave the luminosity on zero. It's just the saturation of the colours we needed to bring up a little bit. Again, we can check that by on. You can see off and on. It's just brought up the yellow in those in the brick and the stones a little bit. We're back over here and we can remove that. Now we've got our finished image. I'd suggest to experiment with this, find a landscape photograph, and this is kind of, well, it's a beachscape, but if it's a landscape photograph, they are really good to work with. In fact, you can walk out into your backyard with your camera, take a photograph, bring it in, and you can begin to experiment with these effects. And you'd be surprised at what you can do. There are a large number of different things that you can do in that adjustment layers. Open a photograph or two and experiment with each of the different adjustment options in turn initially. By experimenting you learn how they work. In this tutorial, we'll look at masking a defined area. Now, what do I mean by masking a defined area? You will have seen images where there would be something like a field, like this one, and the girl sitting in the middle there, as we've, just as we've got here, but everything is black and white except for the girl. Or sometimes in fashion shoots, even the item of clothing that the model's wearing. But in this case, we're just going to select the girl. We don't want to spend too much time on this because we like to keep these tutorials short enough. So what I'm going to do is make sure I've got that layer selected. That's the girl there. And the layer's been rasterized. You can see it there. It's a pixel layer. Sometimes this doesn't work unless they're rasterized. So just make sure you do that first. Now we'll go down to the adjustment layer, which is there, that sort of half moon circle and the, you'll see adjustments pop up there the bottom right hand corner and I'll click on that and I'll go to black and white now there we go you can see I've got black and white there and the image is gone well black and white we don't want the color changes on there so we don't want to make any adjustments to that what we want to do is just make sure that that's all black and white now one of the interesting things with masks, and this is actually a mask, and it's an adjustment layer, an adjustment mask if you like. We've got black in the circle and white in the circle. If I paint over this in black, it will expose the colour layer beneath, which is very nice. If I paint over it in white, well, nothing happens. Um, it just exposes it. Let me show you that. And we'll go to brushes. Where's my brush? There's the triangle. There's the paintbrush tool. Now, I want to select white for my paintbrush. And the size is oh, 100 pixels. You can see the size of the circle there. That's a pretty ragged ed brush, edge brush by the look of it. Let me go and have a look at brushes. And see if we can find... A more well, that's a bad. That's a, a furry edge brush. What I want is basic brushes. Dry media, perhaps. No, that's no good. Acrylics. No, that's no good. Let's just go with basic. We'll find a brush in there. There we go. A round, nice round brush with no furry edges to it. Go back over here, make sure we've got the paintbrush tool selected and we want slightly larger than 16 pixels. 58, um, 40, there we go. There we go there, we've got brushes there. We just click there. Now, what we need in here Why is that not painting? Hmm. 
Now then, what I had to do was select the 32 pixel brush or the number 32 brush, but I've since changed it to 80, the width of the brush. Okay. Now you can see there that there's a faint red dot on the screen and that's where the brush will show. It's not showing there, but if I paint over there, you can see you can see the color there. So let's go and we'll paint around the girl's hair, which you can see is black, so it's not really changing much. But when I get onto her ear, you can see that I'm painting around over her hand. Now it's always advisable you think, oh, I better get a bigger brush because this is going to take all day. So if you want to do this carefully, I suggest take all day. Because if you use a really big brush, it's really hard to control the edges of where you're painting. And you may not think that painting over the black hair is achieving much, but the end result will show you that it is. Now let's just paint across there. And we'll bring the girl's face right in. And you will see that what it's doing is exposing the image below the mask. Now that's pretty clever, isn't it? You don't realise just what a colourful world we live in until you start doing this. And there's the girl's hand instead of that pasty white. Now there's a lovely little face appeared out of the murk of that black and white or greys gone around her shirt there. Now one of the things I want to show you with this, now see I've just gone over the edge there, over the edge of her hand. It's really difficult and you have to be really careful with the mouse in order to get this to control. Now I'll show you another way of doing this which can really aid what you're doing. Now you can see I've got her all coloured in there. We'll go back to layers so you can see the layers. Now there's the black and white adjustment layer that we're using and that's the mask I've used on it. Now there is a better way of doing this or another way shall we say. That's okay to do it that way but there is another way of doing this. What I want to do just to make this a lot quicker I'll just go down here and remove that layer we're back to square one. We've just got the girl there. Now I'll put on the move tool. Go to make sure I've got the layer. I'll go and put the black and white adjustment layer back in. Black and white adjustment layer. There we go. Get rid of the colors. Now what I want to do here is use the selection brush tool. Not the color tool. The selection brush tool. Make sure it's in add mode and probably 37, 38, 39, probably a 40 pixel brush will do it. Now you can see what I've got there. Now I probably could use a bigger brush on this one too, but what I'm doing here, you can see as soon as I hold the mouse down, what I'm doing is selecting all the around the girl, around the edges. Now I'll colour that in there. Well, not colour, but you can see the crawling ants defining the boundaries of the image. Now this is this is a really neat trick, and it allows you to use a very small brush to paint the selection in, or even a big brush, just supposing you were doing the background. There we go, now I'll bring that down there. Bring that right down there. Bring that around there, around her hand. And just like the normal selection tool, you can See this where it's gone over the boundary just there? If I make that 
the subtract version just there. See that's pulled that back in the inside of a hand. Go back to the add version and just take it out to the edge of a hand. Now that's going to be a bit of a trick that one but if you're really careful with this you can do that really neatly over the edge of her shirt. There we go. Around her other hand and you can see that the crawling ants are following the edge of the object. There we go. Now I'll just, will I do the whole of the girl? Why not? It'll only take a moment and you can see what I'm doing there. Going right over the edge. Let's subtract a little bit of that. There we go. We'll just put that in again. Just put that in again. Down we go. Down we go. Down, down, down we go. Around to the edge of the dress. Oh, I've gone over the edge again there. Okay, well let's get all this in first and then I'll go and refine those edges. Down the side there, down the side, down the side, along there, along the bottom. Now we can join all that up. Now, you can see that the girl is sitting inside all the crawling ants. Now that's marvellous. Now I'll show you the neatest trick of all. We could spend a lot of time fixing up that little bit there and a few other little bits here and there and if you spend ages going around that you can really refine that. Of course you can tap refine and that shows you there where you've gone over and you can fix things like that. There we go, there's that one. I won't worry about the others. We'll just apply that to that selection. We've still got the crawling ants and I've neatened up around here and I missed that one there. Oh well, not to worry. Of course, what I want to show you now is we'll go back and select the paintbrush tool and we'll select black and now We've got a 60 pixel brush. Let's make the brush 90 pixels. We still don't want to get too big. And you can see there, there's the brush there. Let's paint in. Now you can go right over the edges. And because it's with your painting within the selected area, you can go where you like and it won't paint over the other rest of the painting. It only paints the part you've got selected. Now that is magic. There we go. It doesn't take much to amuse me and I'm highly amused by that. I think that's marvellous. Now what you can do, you can go down here and think, oh, I don't want to be painting that all day. Let's make this a bigger mask, a bigger brush. And there we go, because you can't paint over the edges of the selection because it's a mask. There we go, that's used a very big brush. It's got all of the girl painted in. And there she is. And you think, well, I don't want those crawling ants all over my image. We don't want those at all, do we? There's a bit down there. Why is that not painting? Ah, you can just faintly see there's crawling ants along there. So there's a bit I missed. Okay, you can fix that by making some adjustments there, going back to your selection tool, um, adding and selecting the crawling ants there, and then painting inside that. Whew. Okay, but what we've got there is a nice little black background and the girl arranged. Now go up to the selection tool and click on deselect. There's the crawling ants gone. 
We'll go back to Move Tool, click anywhere outside the box and the boundary's gone. And that's that. Now isn't that just marvellous? I think that's really neat. And that's how you do it. You can paint on it or you can select it and then paint. And by selecting it and then painting, you can't possibly go outside the boundaries of what you've selected. That can be pretty useful when you've got really fine work to do. OK, I think that's the end of that little tutorial. Thanks for watching. In this section, we're going to have a look at making object selections. Now this is selecting a single object from sometimes a very complex background. And the easiest way to make selections is to use the selection brush tool. Now let's have a look here. So there's our paint brush tool hiding there on the side. It's got the little arrow over it. With this tool all we need to do is paint across the part of the picture that we want to select. As we paint, Affinity Photo will automatically detect the object that we're trying to make a selection of. Now, let's have a look at brush size. The width is 21 pixels and the mode should be, as we've got there, let's see what happens. It may be, there's the whole shark has selected. So the smart brush has picked the boundaries. Now the shark is fairly easy. Let's have a look there. There we go. You can see there's a little bit of movement around there. In around the teeth, are the teeth selected? Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Maybe 10 pixels. There we go. That's much smaller. So that we can go in there because we want not only the jaws out there. Let's subtract that. You can see how I've cleaned out that so that the crawling ants goes across the mouth. We want the mouth left in there. Around the fins, around the tail, there's a little bit of a bump there. I'll leave that for the moment. Now if we zoom in on the photo, view, zoom in, which, which remember of course is you can see around there it's not quite so nice, not quite so neat. We could work for a week on the jaw, so we'll leave that there as is. Now what we need to do is click on the refine button. And you can see that the area around that tail is now cleaned up. Command negative, reduce that back out. Now as you can see, there's quite a few refine, there's quite a few options in the refine toolbar, in that dialog box. In this example, you may want to increase the smooth slider. This will remove all the jagged edges from the selection and now you have a nice smooth selection going around the shark. This is really useful when you're doing um, model shots and you're trying to get the edges around the model's hairline. It's very useful in that area. Once you're satisfied with your selection, you can press apply. Now we've done that and with a selection made, let's cancel that because we selected that. With the selection made, go to the adjustment icon and then apply a recolor layer. 
there's your adjustment icon remember it's the little down the bottom corner there not the mask layer we want the adjustments layer and go to recolor and the recolor adjustment is only being applied where the selection is this is because a mask has been applied to the adjustment layer you can see in the layers panel that the mask is white in the center where the selection is and black everywhere else it's white in the center there where the selection is and black everywhere else it's quite small but it does change this is because a mask has been applied to the adjustment layer If you've already learned, if you've already, as you've already learned, a white mask means the adjustment layer is being applied as it is here, and a black mask means the adjustment layer is not being applied inside the rest of the photo. So exit out of this recolor adjustment and deselect by pressing Command D. So we'll just exit out of that exit out of the recolor adjustment and command D D selects the shark you can see there's no crawling ants around the shark now command D on your keyboard deselects the shark or deselects the object in this case now this is the end of this little section next we go on to making a different background. Now in this section we're going to have a look at um, creating a different background but rather than just change a background what we're going to do is place our object onto a different background in another image. So the first thing we'll need to do is make a selection of the part of the picture that you want to keep. You could make another selection of the shark or you could use a shortcut to reload the selection you've already made. But what we'll do in this case is make another selection of the shark. Because we used our selection to make this adjustment layer if we hold down command then click on the adjustment layer mask icon it will reload our selection this is a very helpful shortcut to remember you can see the shark there is is quite clearly selected now there's the background and there's the icon click on the adjustment layer mask icon that's the background but we want that one there that's the adjustment layer mask All right we still haven't got the crawling ants so we hold down command key and click on that icon and you can see the little crawling ants are back around our shark again it's a very helpful shortcut to remember now that you have your selection made you're going to apply a mask to the photo in this instance the background becomes transparent now we need to apply a mask to this so we select the photo layer or the background layer if you like where the image is and we apply a mask and in this case the background becomes transparent there's our mask icon mask layer create a mask layer there's the mask layer and you can see the background is now transparent so what that's effectively done is clip the shark out of the white background now you could use that if you're thinking about this to select any object in any photo and carefully select it with the brush as you did before the selection brush select it as you did with the shark and completely delete the background so with the mask so that all you are left like the shark is the object that you've selected 
Remember to have the right layer selected and then apply a mask. And just as before, your mask layer has become white wherever the selection was and black wherever it wasn't. And in this case, deselected. So press control, Command D and you'll see it's now deselected. If all you want to do is remove the background, then you've done. Just make a selection of what you want to keep and apply a mask to it, as I just said. Now what we have there is just our selection. But what we're going to do in this exercise is place the picture on a new background. First we need to open another picture. Well, we've got our, our other picture open. Um, let me have a look up here. Australian Outback, uh, Ocean Waves, Aircraft in Sky. So there's our other image already open. And there's our shark image open there. Now then, we've got to copy our shark, but we don't want a red shark. What we need to do, you can see I've got the mask there and I've just folded it up so that it's hidden. But there's our recolor adjustment layer. And, that's, and the recolor was so we could determine our object. But we don't want that now, so we just click on the visibility button. So there's our complete shark. Now what we're doing here is making a copy of the shark. We only want the shark in the image. Now the shark is, it's a transparent background by the way. There's no background at all. In fact, we've masked it out. There's your mask and we folded that up. We don't want the recolor layer anymore because we're finished with that. You can see that we've turned it on, turned it off. Now it's on, but we've got to be careful. Don't leave that selected because you can't copy that. There's the part we copy. That's all that's left. So with the shark selected, press Command C to copy the shark. Now go to the aircraft in the sky, which is where I want to place the, the shark. Press Command V and there's our shark up there. Now, select move, because that's selected the shark and we've placed it there. Now you can make that as big as you like or as small as you like. But there's our shark in the sky. Now you can see there's a little white border around that at the moment. You've now successfully added the shark to the fighter jet photo for a bit of comedy relief. Well, let's face it, it's comedy relief, isn't it? You can put the shark up there if you like. There he is, and you can see why the jet fighters would be after the shark. Okay, what I should do is show you how to get rid of those white borders. You'll remember a moment ago I said that by the method we used just now, if you copy and paste the existing shark that we have and the existing image, you will end up with a white boundary around there. One way of um, getting around this is to actually take the image that you have here now, which is the shark. There's our little shark in the middle. Let me just straighten that up a little bit. The shark in the middle. Remember, that's the layer we want and that's the one selected. So let's crop that. We don't want all that white border around it anyway. So we can bring that boundary in there, <clears throat> that boundary in there, bring that up from the bottom so it's just off the fin tip, bring that one in there. These are a couple of extra steps. Now it's, it's up to you and your image how you do this. Now once you've got the crop set to where you want it, you'll remember from I think it was step two in this process, you go up to apply and there's your new image. Now that we've got our shark cropped to the size we want, let's go up to Edit and Copy Merged. Don't just copy the shark, you have to Copy Merged. Now if we go to Aircraft in the Sky, there's our original shark there. 
now we go to edit and just paste there's our shark there go to one side there's no white border select the shark again oops what happened to him there's our shark there let's bring him up a little bit bigger and no white border around the shark there's our original little shark there now because we copied that differently there's our white border if we move it around there's the shark so you can see I'm turning him on and off it's a pixel layer which is fine turned him on and off the background is just two sharks so we've turned off the background <laughs> and there's our shark in the middle but you can see that that's connected to masks if I turn our shark on there and turn our mask on you can see the mask so the mask is actually showing up there it's not merged into the copy however this one is merged so it's a new layer it's a new pixel layer we've got our background and we've got our shark and we have another shark which still has all of its um, masks attached which is not really what we want so copy merged so that's the end of that section a little bit of comedy relief a shark flying around in the sky and the jet fighters are after it so in this section almost the last section we're talking about text overlays that is taking your image and placing text on it now this is fairly straightforward and it's one of the things you'll probably find you're doing quite a lot adding text is very easy to do in affinity photo all you need to do is select the artistic text tool then click and drag to specify how big you want your text to be and then you can begin typing your artistic text tool down on the left you have two options artistic text tool and frame text tool let's just use the artistic text tool it's a little bit of a tongue twister isn't it now I, where would I want to start typing just there and you drag it out very large text there we want to be able to see it you can see the cursor bouncing away there now you can select your font size from the context toolbar you can make it bold italicized underlined and if you use the color panel you can even change the color of your text then with the move tool you can reposition and resize so let's just do that that's clicking away there let's change the font to cartoon character which I, is in this case I've got Bada Boom there somewhere which I like there's Bada Boom it's regular text it's quite large because we did that out there we don't want it black let's make it what stands out against the blue a nice orange text and you can see it over on the right hand side there's an example shark now if I want to go back highlight all the text reduce the size a little bit we don't want it quite that big do we but having selected that you can then drag the corners so we have shark shark attack and it's as simple as that that's all it's needed to type text in if you ever want to uh, continue typing that text you can see we were up here let's go to there we can move that around if you ever want to continue typing reselect reposition and always check that you have the right panel selected go back to the text tool go back to there and you can see your cursor is hiding there let's put a question mark in there shift oh 
No, it's in there. Shift exclamation mark. And that's all there is to it. Shark attack. That's all there is to section 10. How easy is that? Shall I give you a little bit more? Frame text tool is what it says. You put a frame there and inside the frame is where your text goes. It's only 12 point at the moment. Let's make it 144 points so you can see it. This is extra text. It's inside the box. We can highlight that. You can make it, uh, let's see, what's a nice font? Black Pearl. Maybe you're talking about a pirate ship. Let's change that down to there. Blue, and it's a pile of blue. Oh no, that's not going to look too good, is it? But there's a, there's a pile of text. And when you're finished, you just do that. This is extra text. Too easy. Now in this exercise, let's look at saving and exporting our images. Now recall this image here and we've got a black and white image and a black background and using the brush tool we just put the little girl in highlight. But what we're looking at here is in this lesson, in this tutorial, we want to save our image. Now we've already called it Blemish Removal Lesson 4. Well, it's a little more than that, but there we go. Let's save this image as, and save as, and we'll call it... No, I don't want it in, in there. Where I want it is in Dropbox, Affinity Photo. And we're going to call it... Saving and exporting. And save it. Now, you can see the name up the top there is saving and exporting. And we just want to save that again. You can't because we haven't done any work on it. Well, let's change something. We'll just hide that for the moment. So it's back at its normal thing. Then we can save it. You do any changes and you can then save your image. But what I want to do is bring that back that way and exporting, we go up to File, down the list to Export, and we want to save it as a PNG file. Now there's our sample, our preview. We'll just leave it at that size, 4121 pixels by 2635 pixels. You can see the little pop-up there, width by height. The whole document. Use document format. We don't want to do any of that, or any of that, or any of that. What we're doing at this stage is exporting a PNG file. Now, you can use JPEGs, GIFs, TIFFs, PDF, PSD, SVG, EPS, EXR, HDR, TGA, WebP, and JPEG XL. Lots of options there. We'll just opt for PNG, which is the standard. Generating a preview, and there we go. The whole document. Now, we don't want any of the advanced stuff, so we can turn that off. The estimated file size is 6 megabytes, or 6.03 megabytes, if you like. Now, if we make that a JPG, that will just take a moment. That's 4 megabytes. So, if you want to reduce the file size of something, just change. try changing that to a usable format, maybe a GIF file. Estimated file size calculating, generating a preview, 
But dear, but dear, that's taking a little while, isn't it? I don't know if I want to sit around and wait for that. Let's go back up and go back to PNG. Now, you actually don't have to wait for it to come back and do that. You can just click Export. Tell it where you want to put it, and I'll just put it in, um, let's put it in Pictures, Easy, and Save. And there's our, there's our um, JPG or PNG file saved to wherever you wanted to save it to, as exported. Don't be confused by File Save, which saves it as a .af photo file, because Export will save it as an image. That's the end of that little tutorial.